Good morning. Glad to be able to get back to this a little bit. Uh, sorry about the long delay. Sometimes life jumps up and kind of gets me off track and and I, I don't uh, follow through um, with getting you guys a little bit of a study every morning. Uh, more like every time I think about it, every time I'm ready for it, every time I'm not doing something else as a pastor or or working outside in the, on the place. So if you uh, if you're a little uh, upset with me being slow, um, just bear with me. I'm I'm uh, I'm going to get this out as often as I can. And uh, so there you go. So we've been going through. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to open up a few Bibles here because that's the way I am. Um, we're going to go through some, uh, so continue to go through this. We're almost done with 1 Corinthians 13. What is love? And we found out, first of all, that love is, the, the King James uses the word charity, which uh, which kind of tells you a little bit about the, the word uh, uh, agape, which means it is a, a love that costs you something. Uh, love, there's, there's several different kinds of love, as we've studied before. Uh, and um, and in the in the Greek um, they describe uh, this love agape love as a love that gives a love that um, sacrifices and of course we see this is the love that Jesus has for us and he says this is the love that we need to have for each other um, living in the day and age that we live in and watching the watching the presidential debates and watching the presidential arguments on on Fox News or or ABC NBC CBS whoever you watch um, it's frightening I can't say I'm afraid I'm not fearful because God told me not to to be um, fearful but to understand that he's in charge of it all um, part of my shaking my head moment is bound up in the fact that instead of just standing and arguing with each other uh, over uh, who we are, we ought to be, uh, be politically astute enough to be able to state what the issues are. Anyway, that was last night. I didn't watch it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I've been watching highlights. Um, I can't stand it when two people are just arguing over the top of each other and neither one listening. Um, so anyway, I didn't last long. Here's the deal. When we get to this um, to this uh, study on the uh, on the on the in the scriptures on the uh, love chapter, we see that there is a uh, that there is a, a pattern that is coming out. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not arrogant or rude. What's it does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. And here we are. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. I, I've been looking at this and I've been studying uh, this idea of wrongdoing and the idea of, um, of coming into this. Um, uh, the, the King James puts it uh, that, that it rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Uh, when you when you look at at the at the wording, however, uh, what you come into is is that um, it um, it, it uh, is a doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, and the word is unjustness. It's 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 when especially when a judge is not judge is not justice. It doesn't doesn't carry forth justice. Um, so we don't, what he's saying here is we don't rejoice when we see injustice done. We don't rejoice when we see wrongdoing. We don't re rejoice when we, when we see as the, as the, uh, the, the ESV calls it just wrongdoing. Um, it rejoices in the truth. Um, the HCSV says that it is a, and that it doesn't, it doesn't find joy in unrighteousness. Okay, that's that's my key point. 
My key point is, is that love never rejoices when they see wrongdoing. When we show true love to each other, we should be uh, uh, strong enough to be able to know that whenever we see wrongdoing, whenever we see uh, uh, the uh, the injustice of this world, when we see the the uh, the bad uh, character that is coming out, that we don't rejoice in that. If we, you know, if you if a if you give too much um, of a of a um, uh, attention to those who are who are talking about and doing things that are unjust and has no basis in justice um we can't we can't rejoice in that we can't we can't ha find joy in that so what so what do we do he says that it rejoices in it it rejoices in the truth instead okay so Truth is the is is uh, matter of fact. Even in Jesus' trial, uh, Pilate said, "What is truth?" And uh, and you know, and, and the crazy thing about that is is that <clears throat> truth was sitting right in front of him. John fourteen six says, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." Jesus was talking. Jesus is the very epitome of truth. Now, what do we get from that? How do we how do we look at at, at scripture and know that this what we're looking at is uh, truth or not? Uh, when we when we see something happen, an injustice in this case, uh, we run to the truth. Well, God's word, as by the way, John one says that Jesus was God's word, the the very um, uh, uh, example, the logos of God here on earth was Jesus and Jesus uh, does, he he uh, he is the truth but whenever we look at the the play on words there the word of God your bible that I'm looking at right here is the truth christian get away from looking at all of the other things and listening to all these other things and go to your Bible and find out what you should believe, what you should trust. And so we, we, are, uh, we, we are told that we are supposed to uh, not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth. And when we come into uh, uh, into a... A relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes but to the Father, but by Him. There is no other way for you to find peace in this earth, rather than other than going to God's Word and apply it. What are you doing? What What are you doing in your life? Um, take it to God's Word and say, "Is that a godly biblical?" occurrence in my life? Should I be getting involved in this? And if I'm not supposed to be getting involved in this according to scripture, then get out of there. It is too plain and too in your face that you are not, you shouldn't be happy with things that are wrongdoing. You shouldn't be happy and rejoice that you are uh, in a, 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 a marital affair or in a uh, a, a, a homosexual situation or whatever. Go to God's word and look at what God's word says and compare it back to God's word, not to your feelings. You can't be trusted. Your feelings run amok. Don't trust your feelings. Go to God's word and study God's word. Find what it says Look into the Word of God. James James says uh, something interesting, and, and and I didn't think to look it up early enough. But James says that you that the that that the Word is kind of like a mirror. You walk up to it, you look at you, it at who you at who you are, and then the foolish man just forgets that and walks off. Listen, you have a Bible that will mirror what you're doing. If you have a relationship with Christ and you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, then when you, uh, uh, when you walk up to, to a situation 
and, and look into God's word, it will mirror what you're doing to you. Don't ignore it. When you see wrongdoing, don't rejoice, as this says in verse 6, but rejoice in the truth. So true love is looking at wrongdoing as something to be mourned over, not rejoiced over. And what should be looked at in our lives is looking at God's word and rejoicing, finding joy in the truth of the word. And how do you go from what you're doing as wrongdoing to loving the truth is simply this. One word, repent. Okay? Sunday night through Monday night, sundown to sundown, was the Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement is a time to not only look at our sin and be burdened about it and, and struck down about it and feel bad about it inside. It's not just that. Atonement is realizing that your sins were paid for at the cross of Jesus Christ by the blood that he shed on Calvary. Okay, you got that? So if you're trusting in his blood and you're believing in him, then what you have is a relationship that must be honored by looking into the word of God, comparing your life, changing your life. There's that, there's that way, word repent. It means to change where you were to where you need to go. And by the way, the, the Day of Atonement not only involved being sorry for your sin and asking God to, that you're, to let you repent and change, but it, it is a looking forward to the next period of your life and saying and making plans as to what you're going to do. Christian, your life as a Christian is a practice. We practice day in and day out. Therefore, when you see something wrong in your life, don't just ignore it. Don't just rejoice in it for Pete's sake, but repent and look to the truth to set yourself up with where you're going next. Next time we're going to talk about love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. Good morning. God bless you and have a great day.